Well, I don't know exactly what he was saying, but uh, I mean, the gist of what he was saying was basically that, oh, check it out. Somebody left their helmet here. This looks awesome. Hey, have you heard about this Ruiner game? The farther I get from the year 2017, the more I realize it was a kick-ass year. At least as far as video games are concerned. You've got games like Breath of the Wild, Hellblade, Mario Odyssey, and my personal favorite, Nier Automata. And in this same year, we saw the release of Ruiner. Of all the games I listed, I did not play a single one until at least a year later. In the case of Ruiner, I was in love with the aesthetic in the trailers and promotional footage, but I thought I was just too cool for isometric games. Uh, what's the camera doing way up in the air? This is not a real game for a real gamer like myself. And so I let it pass me by, but I recently saw it in the store and decided to give it a chance. Ruiner is the debut game from Polish developer Raycon, and it's published by Devolver. I'll admit I haven't played that many Devolver published games, but from what I have played it seems like they've got a keen eye for unique and interesting games. As for Raycon, they're a small developer of only a handful of people, but some of them have industry experience, previously working for Techland and CD Projekt Red, who I think have also released a cyberpunk game. How's it going? Anyway, let's see how they did with their first project. I should probably start off by saying that I love cyberpunk as a genre, so this game appealed to me right off the bat for that reason alone. But I have to say I was surprised by just how cyberpunk it was. Granted, that's a pretty subjective measurement, it's not like there's a genre slider that you can just crank to 100% cyberpunk. But I've got this idea in my head of what a perfect cyberpunk world would be, and this game gets pretty damn close to realizing that. I mean, just from a purely visual standpoint, you've got the cold, mechanical environments, the harsh, unnatural light, and a protagonist with an LCD screen for a face. And there are plenty of characters and environmental flourishes highly reminiscent of previous films and anime in the genre. The developers have cited cyberpunk anime in particular as inspiration, and while I haven't seen that many anime in this vein, I can definitely see the inspiration from something like Ghost in the Shell. The character portraits in particular are very anime. And the atmosphere in this game would not be complete without the music. Without the vocabulary to get too technical about it, I can say that it just perfectly lines up with my ideal vision of the genre. It's often brutal and chaotic, with the occasional quiet, synth-heavy moment. I don't know how else to put it, it's just so good. One could make the argument that this game is derivative, borrowing too much from media that came before it. And I do have a counter-argument for that. Whatever, man, it's fucking sick. Maybe I'm not looking hard enough, but it really doesn't seem like there's that much cyberpunk in media, especially in video games. It's certainly not as ubiquitous as something like fantasy or general science fiction. So when something like this comes along, I'm all about it. I mean, I just recently uninstalled Cyberpunk 2077, but... Come on, it was taking up like 100 gigabytes of space! There's just a certain itch that Ruiner scratches. I think it nails tone perfectly too. It's got that particular cyberpunk flavored dystopia. All the corporations are keeping everybody down, gangs rule the streets, people are into weird VR shit, you get the picture. But there's also an underlying humor to a lot of the characters as well. 
I think it's important to strike this balance in most media, and they do a great job here. I'm particularly a fan of the emoticons that she uses. Her uses? They don't give her a name. Anyway, long story short, the atmosphere in this game is a 10 out of 10. They really knocked it out of the park in that department, one of the best cyberpunk worlds I've seen. If you're into the genre, I'd recommend this game for that reason alone. But atmosphere alone does not a good game make. There are some other key elements that help create a satisfying audiovisual experience. Things that bring the whole thing together. And that's before we even get into the actual meat of the gameplay. Son of a... I was once like you, you know? I would see these games with mile-high cameras and tiny characters running around like a bunch of ants and I'd say, Hey, what gives? I can barely tell what's going on here. How am I supposed to know what's happening if I can't see the individual strands of hair on my character's mustache? But now I am enlightened. I'm really smart. And handsome. And cool. And... humble. What was I, uh, right. What I'm trying to say is that isometric games can be pretty cool too. It's all a matter of execution, and Ruiner executes in many ways. Ah, but that's gameplay stuff, I'm getting ahead of myself. I would say that Ruiner does actually fall short in a few places in terms of its presentation, mostly in the sound department. As I said before, the music is excellent, and there is a lot of satisfying sound design in the game, but there are just a few large gaps in the sound design, especially in the cutscenes. Things like a lack of voice acting, and some spots where it really seems like there should be some foley or other sound effects. And sometimes there are sound effects, but they're just not as punchy as you would expect. But for the most part I can overlook this because it seems to me like this is probably a time slash budget problem and not an artistic choice or mistake. As for visuals, I'll say be careful if you're epileptic, but that's probably going to be an issue for any game in this genre. There's a fair amount of flickering images. Not necessarily a critique, but just putting it out there. The game also doesn't run quite as smoothly as I'd like. It's not terribly noticeable when you're in combat, but when you're moving through the levels, it'll often hitch when it's loading more stuff in. Not a huge problem, but it came up frequently enough for me to notice it. Mileage may vary, especially if you're on PC, I'd imagine. Moving on to narrative stuff. This game doesn't throw you many curveballs in terms of characters or plot, but like I was saying earlier, it's very enjoyable cyberpunk genre fare. And while you could say it's all kind of shallow, Whatever, man, it's fucking sick. I would equate the experience of this game to that of a Stallone or Schwarzenegger flick. Cyberpunk does have some strong 80s influences after all. I never questioned the meaning of life or what humanity's purpose is or even the morality of obliterating hundreds of thugs on my quest for vengeance, but that's not what I bought my ticket for. I came here to soak in the music, the dystopian ambience, and the blood of my enemies, baby! <clears throat> Anyway, it's not like it's totally brainless. There is some mildly heavy stuff in the game, but nothing has lingered on for that long, and I don't think that would really be appropriate for a twin-stick action game anyway. Though I suppose anything is possible. The game has wonderful cutscenes, although they tend to be very short, like less than 10 seconds short. They're mostly used as a tool to show off the levels and the world from a literal different angle, but of course they're also used occasionally during big plot moments, the only downside to them is the sound effect issues I mentioned earlier. A majority of the plot and dialogue are delivered through text, and I found it all to be pretty enjoyable. I never got the urge to skip through any dialogue. The game never gets particularly long-winded, it's pretty good about staying on point. That being you whacking and shooting your way through various industrial complexes. And even beyond exposition and character interactions, you've got things like enemy introductions, level transitions, and the end of round affirmations. Domination. I live for domination. All of this stuff is dripping in the same visual flair that permeates the rest of the game. I especially love the stuff with the motorcycle. I mean, just look at this. Mm. What I'm trying to say is, this game has 
mostly kick-ass presentation. I'd give it a solid A. I guess all that's left to talk about at this point is the gameplay. Let me guess. I'm on your turf. Hey bro, I'm just trying to get to my car. Oh, you can't fool me, creep. If you're gonna fight me, just do it already. Bro, for real. Take it easy. I'm serious. Oh, come on. Well, here, I'll tell you what. I'll give you a free hit. Okay, uncle, uncle. Just cut to the next part, would you? Well, it sure would be a shame if the game had everything else going for it, and the gameplay totally flopped. It doesn't. It's really great, actually. The core of the action in this game is the combat. You go through all these different areas, going after some kind of objective, and all along the way are various goons and machines that just need a good bonk on the head. Or maybe a more long-range solution. The choice is yours. The combat is frenetic and exciting. It did take me a minute to get used to it, as this style of game is new to me. The rapid melee and twin-stick shooting felt a little underwhelming at first, but as my abilities and my arsenal expanded, I really got into it. Let's start with the weapons. There are a surprising number of melee and ranged weapons throughout the game, with more introduced in the arena and New Game Plus. They all have a limited durability, which I would compare in severity to Breath of the Wild, although it feels more appropriate to this style of game. The battles are so frantic and the tension is heightened a bit by the limited use of your weapons. Plus you always have a default melee and long range weapon to fall back on, so I never had to worry about using up the good weapons at the wrong time. And there's a nice variety of options for you to choose from. Many enemies will drop whatever weapon they were using and so you'll usually have two or three choices in any given moment. Though there are definitely more long range weapons than melee, you got everything from a standard pistol, to a shotgun, to a pulse gun, to a big fuck off laser cannon, and everything in between. There's sure to be something that'll tickle your fancy. When it comes to melee weapons, there are more or less two variants with different flavors. You've got your quick swipes and your slower heavy hitters. I tended to prefer the latter. And I found the melee attacks to be most satisfying, though generally a riskier proposition. I do wish that the character would face the direction that he's moving when using a melee weapon, because having to aim it with the right stick did feel a little unwieldy at times. Otherwise, it was pretty satisfying. I especially love the Ruiner Finishers, which open up when an enemy is wounded but not quite dead. Click that left stick and you take that sad fucker on a one-way trip to Pain Town. Doing so will give you a break from taking damage, as well as a small recharge of your health and energy. And it just looks really good. But finishers are far from your only ability. I won't dive into every ability on the menu, but there's a pretty nice selection. Throughout the game you'll earn experience in the form of karma. When you get enough, you'll level up and get points to put into the skills that you unlock. You'll also collect these points from defeating stronger enemies. And with these points you can unlock dashing, grenades, mind control, weapon drops, power boosts, time shifting. There's something for everybody. There's also more practical stuff like increased health or higher durability weapons. But the best part about these abilities is that you're not locked into anything that you equip. Any ability point that you spend can be retracted, meaning you can start from scratch and do an entirely different build from one battle to the next, or just trade out one ability for another. In some cases, it's almost required due to the circumstances of a battle. This encourages you to mix things up rather than just sticking with one strategy through the whole game. Though I will say that at some point I felt that Overload was pretty essential for surviving a lot of fights, especially going into New Game Plus. Once I got into the back half of that, there was a lot of mad dashing around the stage and blasting my rifle haphazardly. I did occasionally feel like the difficulty fluctuated at certain points. At times I would get taken by surprise at how difficult an encounter was and I'd die suddenly. And some boss encounters presented a real sudden spike in difficulty. The devs have stated that in hindsight they probably would have made the game a little easier as some people find it a touch too hard. Personally, I never found it so difficult that it was frustrating, and even if I did, there was a difficulty setting below the one I was on. That said, there is definitely a decent level of challenge to some of the fights. Between the combat encounters, there's not too much to chew on. There's an occasional world-building blurb, various chests with weapons or karma, and a pretty simple hacking game to open some gates and chests. Aside from that, you're mostly just traveling from one match to another. But the fights themselves are such a blast, I can't complain too much. 
Outside of the main combat chunks of the game, there's a small hub town that you'll return to between missions. It's a nice addition to the flavor of the world, and it's got some neat little diversions you can partake in if you choose, like helping this girl out by hacking cats or talking to some of the locals. I kind of would have liked to see another town area like this or seen this one expanded, but I don't think their absence really detracted from the experience. Raycon did add some stuff into the game post-launch, however. Quite a bit. From New Game Plus, to new outfits and weapons, to a speedrun mode, and even new music. The speedrun mode is about what you'd expect, I suppose. You're just trying to get through the game as fast as possible, and they've taken out all the filler stuff that just takes up time. They also added an arena mode, pitting you up against hordes of enemies in different configurations with new toys to demolish them. There's even an interesting mechanic that lets you choose between two new upgrades after each round. And they added in a couple interesting minigames to break up the action a little bit. But no matter what mode you're playing, the gameplay itself is top-notch. Absolute blast. It's really tight, it's engaging, and it's fun. It's just fun. I mean, what else can I say? This game kicks ass. What are you waiting for? Go play it. Seriously though, I highly recommend this one. I had a total blast playing through it. It does have a few shortcomings, but they're so easy to overlook thanks to everything else being so solid. It's absolutely worth playing, without a doubt. I hope you'll check it out. Now if you'll excuse me, my head's actually stuck in this thing, and I can't see where I'm going. <laughs>